Uh, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior. Uh, I'm Pastor Jason Zerbel. This is Pastor Josh Willitson. Um, we're getting together today for a very special reason. We are living in some very extraordinary times right now. Um, I've often heard it explained that we're in unprecedented times. Uh, I don't necessarily believe that's true. Do you? No. Uh, things like this have happened before, maybe not uh, in all our lifetimes, but the church has faced difficult times throughout her long history. Yeah, we've always been a church under the cross. So, um, plague, flu, famine, all of these things, it's not unprecedented. Persecution, unprecedented for us, but not unprecedented. Certainly extraordinary and terrifying, though. Uh, that's, we decided to put together this uh, kind of pastoral public service announcement, not just for our parishioners, but you know, for anybody who may be watching or listening. I um, figure this is probably the best way to address some concerns, some fears that you may have. Uh, we want to come at it from a very pastoral, theological, Christ-centered perspective. Uh, you may not hear things you necessarily want to hear today, but uh, we're here to, to give you the truth and to tell you how the church has come at this and how your Lord has come at this. So with that, um, addressing fear, Pastor, why don't we uh, talk about the fear that's going on today? Yeah. So I, I, I would say that uh, fear is the, uh, the word of the day. People are maybe even panicking uh, because uh, they don't know a lot about this virus. What will COVID-19 do? Uh, how deadly is it? Uh, how infectious is it? And, uh, and of course, the, the news media uh, is, uh, of course, pumping this through, and everybody's watching the news, and uh, that makes people all the more afraid. And uh, we might ask the question, well, ultimately, where, where does this fear come from? And I think fear comes from our recognizing our own mortality, our fear comes from our recognizing that we are not the ones in control of the situation. Um, that uh, you know, we, we have no control ultimately whether we get COVID-19 or any other illness. We're not in control of when our own death might be. Yeah. We're not even in control of how much we're going to suffer in life. So control, that would be, that's an obvious first commandment issue. Obvious, you know, fear, love, and trust in God above all things. Um, now, we don't have control over whether or not we get COVID-19, ultimately. No. But there are precautions we can take. Certainly. You know? I mean, we don't put God to the test, obviously. No. Uh, yeah, we, in, in, in other words, uh, we, we, we don't want to, if we know somebody is infected, we don't want to uh, in, embrace them and, and uh, uh, and, and so, so wrap ourselves around them that we will make sure that we are infected and then go and spread that around to other people. You know, no. Let's share or, an ice cream cone with my yeah, COVID. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or I'm going to refrain from washing my hands yeah. and, you know, idiotic things like this. No, no, right? We are to, uh, you know, take all normal hygienic steps and even in these, you know, extraordinary times... Some extraordinary uh, step, steps, yes. but not, I don't know, not, not uh, completely, you're still in the world, yes. not of the world. Yes, yes. You know, you, you know e even while people are social distancing and, uh, and me maybe even self-quarantining, uh, ultimately, right, somebody has to go out even and get groceries and things like that. So it's, it's actually impossible for any person to be completely quarantined and isolated. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, anyhow. Uh, now, we've been talking about this, and we wanted to share with you, obviously fear is the word of the day. Uh, when we talk about people are scared, uh, and they're getting it from all areas. There's a lot of fear of the unknown, fear of what is being made known, because sometimes that's worse. I've heard it said on the news today that... Um, the cure is worse than the disease, actually, right now. People are going crazy and causing more problems with our, our attempts to cure and prevent rather than what the disease is actually doing. 
Uh, talking about fear, some of the notes I took here, uh, would you say that we're dealing with more germophobia at this point? When, are we dealing with uh, fear of mortality and you know that kind of suffering? Um, false guilt fear? I think it, you know bringing up the the false guilt or or fear of even passing on COVID nineteen inadvertently to to someone else and kind of dealing with not not wanting to be personally responsible for causing another person's suffering and or death. And of course, I don't think anybody ever wants to be uh, the one that's responsible for such things. Well, that's good. That's God-pleasing Fifth Commandment stuff, right? I mean, we're caring Absolutely. for our neighbor. Yes, yes. yes. We, we want to do all that we can to, to uh, guard and protect our, our neighbor in his, in his body. Uh, and yet, we have to look at all these things. The, these are our fears. Uh, but we ha have to hold them in perspective to the cross. So, you know, uh, COVID-19 aside, there are many things, many decisions that uh, you and I can make and others on a daily basis that may uh, inadvertently end up hurting somebody. Uh, we, we don't go about our day intending to hurt anybody, and yet despite my best intentions, sad to say, Jason, I... Uh, I end up hurting people, and when I become aware of that, folks, it really sucks. It does, uh, it, uh, and and when I become aware of that, of course, what do what do I do with that, Jason? I confess it uh, to the Lord. I, I I and if I'm very troubled, I, I seek out uh, a, a a brother, a father confessor to confess my sins, and and receive absolution because ultimately, folks. Uh, the blood of Christ uh, covers my sin, covers your sin, and... Um, covers all guilt. Yes, yes. And I think a couple of things you brought up there that uh, popped into my head. Uh, first off, when you questioned me, you ca caught me off guard. So the first, <laughs> you know, the three-year-old answer comes to mind. I'm like, well, it's got to be Jesus. And, yeah, and yeah. it is. Take, 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 take yes. us to Jesus. Um, one of the things... Like in, in the military, uh, police deal with the same thing. Um, fear, um, if it's not, if you, you train for this, everybody's going to be afraid. That's a natural thing. But fear can become paralyzing. Oh, yes. Uh, and when fear becomes paralyzing, that's when people, that's when real damage gets done. So you learn to operate in the fear, kind of a muscle memory thing. And I think that's where um, good, strong catechesis and the muscle memory of faith kicks in, you know, hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where else would I be, right? That's, That's right. Um, we can call it, you know, calling on God's name in yeah. every trouble, prayer, praise, and giving thanks. That's... I mean, Lord, have mercy, right? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that, you, that caught my attention when you were talking is, is the guilt. Um, and, and I think of how the devil operates in this, you know, the... The accusation, because we, we'd be saying false guilt. Now, we could be guilty of transmitting inadvertently, obviously. And we're no one, I don't know of anybody who's intending to spread disease. I know, uh, what was it, just about this time last year, those idiots were in licking ice cream in the grocery stores. I bet you, yes, you yes. Know, yes. that's a whole different ballgame. Exactly. Lord yeah, have yeah. mercy on them. Mm -hmm. um, but the devil, I think, I, mean, I know. The devil is running roughshod right now over, over our people with false guilt. You know, the accuser is making accusations and we're, we're actually believing the lie that you need to stay home and you need to uh, quarantine from all things, including the bread of life, because you don't want to kill somebody. And, you know, then the paralyzation kicks in and everything else. And we wind up essentially starving starving and paralyzed fear. Um, the word that keeps coming to mind is, is suffering. Do you think that we're... Uh, well, and two extremes I think we've got to look at. Um, there's one, the, the stupid extreme to where Christians... And we deal with this as pastors a lot. Um, I don't know how often you've heard it. I know I've heard it quite a bit where people actually... Where the true struggling kicks in is when they come in 
and they're blown away because they are suffering. And they think that for, you know, they have their name on the church roster, and they've been baptized, and they've been confirmed, and, you know, they do all the, and they show up to church every Sunday and put money in the plate, so why are they not immune to suffering? <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. you dealt with it too. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, it, it does happen. And, and uh, the, the, the shortest answer to that is uh, because Christ our Lord has, has said just the opposite, that uh, if you are one of his followers, if you belong to Christ, we are to expect suffering in this world. Yeah. We are going to have trouble. The Christian life is not, uh, is not uh, easy. The Christian life is not all cake and ice cream. And, uh, Wouldn't that be nice? Take uh, up it, your cone and follow me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not. I, I, I believe it's take up your cross oh, and follow after man, me. You're such a downer. And and deny yourself. Um, so, right. The, if the the world has hated me, it's going to hate you too. Well, you expect things to be different. Yes. Right? Yes. So so. Right. Uh, the Christ, Christians are going to suffer precisely because they belong to Christ. And of course, we even have suffering in general uh, because of sin, because of original sin, sin in a fallen world, sin because of our own, or, or trouble because of our own sinful flesh. Um, you just made me think. Something I think the devil, again, is going to work on accusation. If, if we would um, come down with COVID-19 or any sickness, cancer, or even the flu, or anything like that, um, or the suffering of, say, marital distress, or financial distress, job distress. Um, the devil comes and accuses and says, God is punishing you. Yes, yes. So then we start to, you know, we fall into this very works righteous, what do I need to do to get back into God's graces? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure somebody's already asked this question uh, somewhere. Is God punishing America and the world for... With COVID nineteen, oh, you know, they've been asking that since September eleventh and Hurricane Katrina. Yes, yes, yes. And and the and the short answer, folks, is no. Right, God, God is not, uh, God is not revealed to us in His Word that He is punishing the United States of America, that He's punishing um, uh, the the world or or anyone else for any particular reason. Uh, so no, we we can't go there. Now we we can go here though that that any time there's a famine there's a disease there's an earthquake natural disaster uh, evil befalls us we we are to look at all these things as a as a call to repentance symptoms there's symptoms of sin yes that's a key word we hear yes. asymptomatic you're without symptom well if things have been going so awesome in America since say the baby boom. You know, maybe we're asymptomatic of the sin that's still to the point where we've ignored and don't recognize yes. the sin that infects us all still. Yeah, and so and so, an appropriate response uh, for for everybody when these things come is it is to personally repent, to take it as a personal call to repentance, yeah. and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a, a, a sinner, and uh, and and give me faith to to trust your word. And promise of the forgiveness of sins in Jesus. Now let's go to the opposite extreme because we talked about those who the devil comes in and and accuses that uh, God's punishing you, or or you know I'm immune from sin, so why is it or from suffering, so why is this happening to me? Let's go to the opposite extreme, and I think that's what I know we've been dealing with. Um, people go to the opposite extreme and they, they stay away, or they try to uh, completely quarantine from all suffering. Um, that's not the answer either. I mean, I get to quarantine from, again, we don't put God to the test, but can you completely quarantine yourself from all suffering? No, no. I mean, uh, again, we don't get to choose the crosses that we bear in life. We Ultimately, we are not in control. We are responsible for a great many things. Uh, we are responsible for how we conduct our lives. God's given us the gift of reason to think through things and, and make choices and decisions. Uh, we certainly are not to go out and, and, uh, and seek suffering or seek a cross. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just be faithful, yeah. the cross will find you. Yeah, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, um, but we, we also are not to avoid it. We, we just deal with day by day uh, what, is, what is given to us, both the good and the bad. And, uh, and we are called to be, to be faithful in, in the handling of, of everything and taking, taking all things uh, captive to, to God and Christ. Well, what's your Lord say you know, in, in uh, the Sermon on the Mount? It, got enough to worry about to, well, there's enough troubles to worry about tomorrow yes you know, just focus on today focus on and today. I know that's a paraphrase but uh, seek seek first uh, the reign of the reign of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you and, yep. and of course the, all these things are well all the things you and I and everyone needs for our bodily life and existence that so. is going to be a good segue let's put a pin in that. There was one other point I did want to talk about um, before we move on with needs and necessities versus wants and ideals. and um, We're definitely, in terms of extremes, we're, we're trying to center up. That's what Lutherans have always done, right? We have the extremes of the Roman Catholics, the extremes of the Reformed. They're always centering up on the cross. Um, we have some conundrums facing us today. How do we as good Christians, uh, how do we navigate the extremes? We, you know, we have obligations. Uh, we, we desire to keep the commandments not in order to be saved, but out of the joy that we are saved. So out of the joy of God's grace in Christ because of Christ, I desire to keep the first commandment, the second commandment, the third You know, let's look at commandments one and three, especially Fear, love, and trust in God above all things, and and honor the Sabbath by keeping it holy. All right, so we don't despise preaching in His Word. We hold it sacred. We gladly hear and learn it. So I get that. But then I also have obligations to keep commandments 4 and 5, which are, when we get down to the meaning, render unto Caesar what Caesar is, obey Caesar, obey all those in authority over us, because the authority is from God. And... We don't desire to hurt nor harm our neighbor. You know, that's what, if you even called your brother fool, you've murdered him. So we, we have no desire to hurt nor harm our neighbor, but to help and support him in every way, shape, and form. So there's this great, how do I honor God and honor his Sabbath while still honoring Caesar and not killing my brother. <laughs> yeah. Especially in the midst of this uh, yeah. current uh, COVID-19 crisis. Yeah, no, very very good question. I'm glad you brought up the, uh, the tension that way. That way. And I, I would simply start off by saying that I think that there are many right answers in that point of tension and that uh, ultimately each person uh, you know, has, to, has to figure out what is best their conscience being held captive to uh, the Word of God. And there are, uh, but of course, there are a few wrong, uh, wrong approaches or wrong ideas. So, of course, you can't just simply to choose to focus on one or two commandments to the exclusion of, of the others. So, I can't all of a sudden say, well, now the fifth commandment becomes the most important. Now, I, I, obviously, right? We, we don't want to do anything that would ever uh, uh, hurt or harm our neighbor and his body. We want to do everything we can to uh, protect and pre preserve life. Uh, that, that's, that's what we want to do. But at the same token, that doesn't mean that we can forget about uh, the, the third commandment and our, our need to uh, attend to the hearing of, of God's word. Uh, the, the preaching of God's word and the, and the receiving of God's gifts because uh, there is a, a spiritual necessity. Uh, the, the whole reason for the third commandment is because we as sinful human beings have an absolute need for the word of God, for the word of Christ. Uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing uh, through the word of Christ, says St. Paul in Romans uh, 1017. So uh, we, we can't just, you know, get by without that and, and say, well, so for the good of my neighbor, because I don't want to spread uh, 
COVID-19 for the, to them inadvertently. I am therefore going to take a vacation from God's word. Social and, distance from God. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're right. That, that, that's, a, that's an obvious thing that you can't do. Yeah. Um, so that, that would be one extreme. And then, then of course, the, the other extreme would be, okay, so uh, because I'm taking God's word seriously and I want to be in the word of Christ and I want Christ's body and blood, I am not going to care at all for my neighbor. And so, uh, and so I am just going to carry on as usual uh, and pretend somehow that uh, this, this uh, outbreak doesn't even exist. And I'm just going to go into what I have always done. Uh, you can't do that either. That trespasses into uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses territory, where if you just have more faith, you can pray away the cancer and pray away... Yes, you yeah. Know, I mean, it gets very easily into that. Uh, you put God to the test. Uh, I, I said it in my sermon this past Sunday, but we, we cast ourselves off the proverbial high spots, trusting that... Um, God will protect me from COVID-19. You know, I'm filled with disease and everything, but uh, no, don't put God to the test. We don't do that. Uh, no, yes, yeah, we you need to be very hygienic, and and it is good to, to engage in social distancing. You yeah. Don't, you don't, uh, it, it's, it's healthy and appropriate. Now, you got me thinking about uh, our lessons appointed for this fourth week in Lent. Uh, we both preached yesterday on, on the Exodus text. Was it Exodus 16 off the top of my head? The Israelites in the wilderness and they're hoarding manna. Um, it's one of the things that got me thinking about uh, our situation today. They're hoarding and hoarding and we trust in God but dot 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 um, the fruits aren't matching the confession. What do you? Uh, what do we do to that? <laughs> hoarding, boy. I, I, I think we all have an example of that, uh, right? All the hoarding of toilet paper, toilet paper, really, uh, and as well as other as other food. I mean, these are things that you only see uh, come out on zombie apocalypse movies, but yet somehow this is this is really this has happened. This is how crazy our American public is. Is acting as if our Christian nation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not a Christian nation, folks. As if, right? As if the supply chains have broken down, and and folks, right? The supply chains in our country have not broken down. Uh, the uh, the empty shelves are being restocked. Thanks be to God. But but what does it? What is it profit by hoarding all this stuff? Just like what did it profit is Israel? Jason, what what happened when the Israelites tried to hoard extra manna for their families to save it over for the next day? You did it did it do them any good? The answer is not Jesus here, so I don't. Know it, what to say. Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went to rot, uh, and that's one thing I preached on yesterday. Is Moses commanded that you don't? Now, is that true in every situation? No, we see farmers with silos and. We have pantries in that. It's, it's full of God's blessing. But in that instance, Moses commands the people because they're dealing with the trust issue in God. Yes. We'd rather go back to Egypt. And he says, no, trust. He gives them, you brought up something before, um, the Sabbath rest. And God gives double on the sixth day so that they can rest. There's no excuses. I've already given you everything you need. You rest and receive while I serve you. That's right. And well, we got busy, you know, people are too busy running to Walmart and hitting the bunkers and everything else because they don't trust that their Lord will provide. That may bother you, but it's true. We don't trust that the Lord will provide for our daily body and life, all that we need. So, it, and so this hoarding, uh, whether it's toilet paper or food or other things, is it's a, it's a, it's a, our own personal idolatry coming to expression. I'm trying to take control of my life or this little thing in this, this way. And so I'm going to make sure that I'm okay by doing this. And it, 
you know, maybe it makes you feel better for a time, but, uh, but really your time would be much better placed by calling on God's name in prayer and saying, Lord, uh, you know, help me, uh, admitting to him, uh, Father, I'm, I'm afraid. I don't know what to think. Uh, I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> Forgive me and, and, and deliver me and help me to, to think through properly what, what I should do in this case. You just, this isn't in our notes. This just came to me. It's not like the Holy Spirit talked to them. It's not like that. We're not Pentecostal. <laughs> but we're in the time of Lent. You and I have spoken about this. Um, Lenten fasting. And talk about an opportunity. One of the things you said, we take time to turn to God in prayer. Well, that's what Lenten fasting is. Rather than eat dinner, I take that time for that meal and I devote it to, it's not just I don't eat, the time that I would be eating, I take time to feed on the bread of life. I, you know, I set aside special time. Do you think that maybe our Lord is, is uh, giving us kind of an in-your-face in opportunity to fast and turn and repent and feed on Him and and then I have to wonder, you know, are we doing it? Opportunities knocking, and we don't recognize it at the door. Yeah, I think we're yeah. too busy in the bunker hoarding our toilet paper. So yeah, yeah, no, I, that's that's a great point, and I would say certainly for every for every Christian for uh, who who is taking God's word seriously, wanting to hold fast to it, we we should see this, yes, as God's call to repentance and to to uh, fast from other things and and to feast on his on his word and uh, on his uh, sacraments now that leads to the next point all right how do we proceed forward in all this I mean we're, we're walking a tightrope talking about going through a minefield you know um, how do we proceed forward like bull in a china shop um, you do have to proceed forward, so we can't just hide in the bunker and say, "Well, we'll come up two months from now." Uh, you know, something like I'll get Amazon to deliver toilet paper in the midst of that. But we have to go forward. Um, we go forward in grace. We've talked about, you know, confident in the grace of God. I guess we're probably going to make mistakes. We're sinful humans. Yeah. Yeah, yes, not I, cheap I, I, no, and I freely admit it. I, you're looking at a, a sinner, and uh, but yes, confident in, in God's grace in Christ that uh, that His blood, the blood of Christ, covers all my sins. Uh, and I think sometimes for for Christians, what gets us is again, we don't want to be, we don't want to do evil. Right? We want to keep God's law and commandments because we know the law represents, or not, not represents, but is the expression of God's good and gracious will. And so I, I want to love my neighbor. I want to love God. I don't want to ever be the cause of, of evil and harm. Yeah. And yet I have to confess, because God's word teaches this, is that sometimes I inadvertently am the cause of my neighbor's harm. And so, well, the, the good news of Christ is, the, is that Jesus has died for all my sins, all your sins, even these inadvertent times where, uh, where despite our best efforts, despite, despite our being conscientious, that we still have a, a terrible effect on somebody and cause them great harm, and maybe could cause them to contract, in this particular instance, COVID-19, and maybe inadvertently their death. I, right? That's Certainly the last... nobody's desire. Yeah, that's the last thing I want. But yet I can't live in the fear, in the paralyzing fear and worry, so that then I don't do what God has called me to do. Exactly. Uh, I need to trust the Lord and His promises, and and daily go and do what the Lord has called me to do as a as a pastor, as a husband, as a father, as a neighbor, as a citizen, uh, and as do you, according to the vocations that uh, God has given you. Now let's talk about uh, necessities then, because there are things we need to do. There's things we need to have. 
uh, needs don't equate to wants, though. I think every parent has dealt with that with their kids. Uh, and it's very easy to preach, but it's not so easy to listen to. It's not easy to preach it to the guy in the mirror. And it's very difficult to take it from the Lord, you know, our, our Heavenly Father. There's, there's necessities, there's needs, and then there's ideals, and then there's wants. So how do we navigate that? What Living in our day and age, we don't want to, to uh, bring harm to anybody. We don't want to be the agent of death, by no means. But what is necessary? You know, I, I know we've heard our Lord talk about it, that which is necessary and everything else isn't. Um, talk about it. I mean, let's, let's hear it from a pastoral perspective. The necessities for the Christian, the wants, the desires... The ideals. I mean, how how does the church come at this? What what is our job? What are we to be preaching and proclaiming and pointing to right now? Sure. Well, so so obviously it, it's everybody knows the necessities for bodily life and existence. We must have air, uh, right? If you can't breathe, you would yet die. Uh, the what else does the body need? It needs food and drink, uh, shelter and clothing. So these are. These are the bodily necessities, and of course there are spiritual necessities. And so uh, we, we need, what, what does faith need? What, uh, what are the requirements of faith? Well, you need Christ. We need the word of Christ. Faith, there can be no faith apart from the word of Christ. Um, you know, I'm not original with saying this, um, but uh, uh, faith, uh, faith is breathed into the Christian. Uh, it's not the Christian soul possession, but faith is breathed into the Christian through, uh, through the word of Christ, the spirit breathing faith into yeah. us. And, and so, right, you take away Christ, you take away the word, uh, guess what? There's not going to be a uh, faith. suffocating. Yes. Uh, so, well, you think of all the other things too. I don't mean to interrupt, but your Lord calls He is the living water, and yes. He will thirst no more. He is the bread of life. Yes. Uh, I think on 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 His cross, what flowed forth from His side at crucifixion was what blood and water. And water yeah. You know, um, which still flows to us in the sacraments. Yes. You know? So we have the bread of life. We have His life blood. We have um, His living water, and and it's. People will shut themselves off from that. And which is the last thing that they want to do, because apart from Christ, there, there is no life. And so the church, the church is always the gathering of, of the faithful, of believers, around Christ and where he's promised to be in, in word and sacrament. Because this is where Christ is in our midst, in, in particular, uh, according to his steadfast love, mercy, and grace to to give us the forgiveness of sins, to renew and strengthen uh, our faith, uh, to, to help us precisely in, in times of crisis, like we're going through right now uh, during this, this current one. And where does he fix our eyes? On him. Yes. You know, that's, let's talk about, uh, we only have a couple minutes left here, let's talk about what the church is doing. Your church, my church, churches all over, um, Pretty much everybody is offering some form of online worship. Now we are still doing uh, in-person worship. We've we've had to go to multiple services to keep the numbers small. There are good and godly things we do. Uh, we we play it smart, but we're still in worship. Um, there are just about every place I know has gone to recorded or or. Um, how can that be good? But how can that also be? or become. Maybe that's how we should word it. Because if you are not able to be in worship, as I've said before, and you're, you're home getting the recorded services, don't think that you are sinning somehow. You you know, it's good and God-pleasing worship, but like everything, it can become evil if it gets taken to the extreme. So let's talk about recorded services as perhaps a substitute for the divine service. Well, first of all, I'll just say it this way, Jason, that of course, nothing is the substitute for the divine service. Uh, you, you can't ever substitute 
the divine service because uh, in the divine service, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit uh, gather, uh, uh, come and meet us, and and serve us with forgiveness, life, and salvation. In the Holy of Holies. As yes. They take up their place on the mercy seat that is our altar. That's right. And the, and the absolution that's given in the service is fresh and new that day. And the the reading of the scripture is publicly, and the preaching is live and for the people that day. And the eating and drinking of Christ's body and blood for the forgiveness of sins is live and in person. He's bringing heaven to you. Yes, that, that day. Uh, and so, uh, obviously, while you can hear the word proclaimed and preached, uh, either through you know Facebook Live or or some other recording, recording. Yeah. you can't take Holy Communion uh, online. You can't have a virtual baptism. Uh, it, 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 these things don't work. Yeah. And uh, and so right there, there's never there's never a replacement for the divine service. Now, with that said, given the the times that we're in. Uh, yes, some people at this time, it's wise and best that they don't gather with everybody else to guard and protect their own, uh, their own health. And, uh, and, you know, because we don't want to, uh, uh, we, we want to be conscious about not as best as we can spreading it to other people. So, yes, sometimes it's okay to stay home. And then things like having a service and sermons recorded is of great benefit because you can still then hear the word of Christ and and be fed and nourished that way. Uh, but then, right... And we can come visit and bring communion. But yes. That is, it's yes. a temporary stopgap. Yes. I liken it to a, a tourniquet, you know, like a battlefield tourniquet. It, it's triage. It's yeah. triage. It gets you through, but you don't go through life with a battlefield tourniquet. It's it's enough to keep you alive and get you plugging along, but it's not intended to be a permanent thing. That's right. So so it's something to do for the short term while we're in the midst of this uh, uh, situation, but it, it's it's not something for the long term. As, as soon as you can, you want to get back to going to the divine service. And and then certainly, uh, I guess another use of these videos and things are uh, a, as, you know, other helpful resources to help point people to the divine service. Yeah, yeah, and we will have more. We'll be doing Bible studies. Or we'll, we'll do uh, the old Lutheran term, a, a table talk. On specifically maybe on the sacraments and things of that nature. I think things that people need to hear. Um, real quick, before we close, the church is not about separating you from your money. One of the biggest things that bothers me is when good intention Lutherans even talk about, well, you know, this is a business and we're in the business of saving souls and the church is not a business. Um, the IRS might think so, you might think so, but the church is not a business. The gospel is not a commodity. Uh, you are not customers. Um, the church is God's bride, you know, and that's what it is. That said, um, the church needs support. Uh, so how do we address giving issues without making it sound like we're trying to pick your pocket or anything like that? Well, I, just uh, I think in a very straightforward manner. Um, why do we give? Why do we give offerings? Well, we give offerings and and thanksgiving and, and praise to to God in Christ for uh, the forgiveness, life, and salvation He gives us, and we give them to support the local mission and ministry of Christ in our in our midst. Uh, and and the you know the biggest way that uh, congregations. And, uh, and the baptized show that they uh, have uh, received and believe the gospel is by supporting the mission and ministry of Christ at the local level. Because guess what that, uh, the, the chief thing that these uh, offering dollars go to is to providing the salaries and the, the livelihood 
uh, for those whom Christ has called to preach and teach the gospel in your midst. Uh, so To give you real intangible gifts of him. Yes, yes. Uh, so, right, expenses uh, continue for the church even in times of crisis. Things don't... The lights are on. we got to pay for this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> just, just, just like in even in your, your own lives, right? Uh, just because we're in a, a, a difficult time or crisis, that doesn't mean uh, that normal expenses somehow magically go away. They... They continue, and, and so when it comes to giving, um, if you can't gather or don't want to gather, uh, send in your offerings, or you know, drop it off, or seek out a, you know, a way that you can electronically give. But continue giving. The Lord doesn't stop giving to you. Yes. This is how you show thanks, and that's I think that's what we got to stress. It's a way of showing thanks. Uh, we, when I first got to my congregation, they had the old habit of receiving the offering and the pastor would turn around and offer it up and then put it on the altar, which is, I understand why people think of making sacrifice to God. And that's, we, we've gotten away from that. Um, we set our offerings off. To, we don't want people to think that they are making a set like it's a quid pro quo there's a good good term for today there's no quid pro quo you know if i give god more money god will scratch my back in return or you know something like, or god look at how much i've done for you yeah we can we can never outgive god it's not a transaction no, it's a no. simple saying thank you so um those of you at home today i mean whether you're coming to worship or not you still have air in your lungs. The fact that you can watch this shows that God has blessed you with, with riches that the, all the rest of humanity, kings and, and kingdoms, have not known the riches you have right now, the abundance you have right now, even in what we call hard times. Um, your Lord has blessed you. And even if all that was taken away, you have air in your lungs, you have sky overhead, you have the love of God. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against that. So guess what? Neither will virus or unemployment or, or lack of toilet paper or anything else. This is how one simple way we say thank you to God. Correct? Amen. You, you said it well, uh, my dear brother. My friend, why don't we, uh, I'll let you close. Let's close with prayer. All right. Let us uh, pray the, the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. And thank you. We'll be doing more of these in the weeks to come. God bless. Blessings.